The following program is rated U for universal audiences and is considered suitable for listeners of all ages. This is a presentation of Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. Welcome back to the quintessential Whovian or Q Who. All right, I am your host, John Russell, and today we are going to be talking about the new release of the animated version of Galaxy 4, the William Hartnell story, which began season three, but uh, was actually recorded towards the end of season two. As Verity Lambert was departing, she was setting up the next season. So it was the last full story that she produced. Uh, episode 3 was found in 2011 officially, um, and later released as part of the Aztecs Special Edition, along with a abbreviated reconstruction of the rest of the story with telesnaps and other clips that had survived. Um, so we, we did have a bit of Galaxy 4, thankfully, and I've enjoyed watching the material that we had for years. I've watched that stuff to death and came to appreciate Galaxy 4 as a story. It, it's a very rudimentary Doctor Who story, granted. There's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's fairly straightforward. There's not a whole lot going on. Uh, it's it's not so well regarded by most of fandom, but I do think it's underrated. I think it's it's better than a lot of people seem to think it is, and I think people uh, read the synopsis and maybe have seen the loose cannon reconstruction and think, oh well, there's just nothing to this story. But uh, there's a bit more to it, um, especially. The acting involved, I thought it was uh, well performed, and uh, yeah, there's there's some some fine performances in there. Again, there's there's not a lot of characters, there's not a lot going on, um, but that helped them to go ahead and decide to animate this one and to get back into William Hartnell's era that way, and it makes perfect sense, really, if you think about it. It was a four part science fiction story with very few characters, very few sets. Um, uh, yeah, not a lot going on as far as, you know, there are not a lot of bells and whistles. But um, it, it's an interesting story because you've got the basic plot of the good guys are the ugly aliens that you would normally think of as the invaders. But the bad guys are these beautiful Amazonian women <laughs> um, who are ruthless and uh, they, you know, they, they're just out for their own means. Um, so it's that, that in itself is a pretty interesting concept and the way that it was written it was very interesting. So I think Galaxy 4 has a bit going for it. It's, it's not uh, the most dynamic Doctor Who story. Certainly, and, uh, you know, it would soon be overshadowed by other things. Um, immediately after, by the one-off story without any of the cast, Mission to the Unknown, with the Daleks, of course, and then Myth, the Myth Makers, uh, a historical, which was a bit more lavish and, and had a lot more characters. So, And, of course, followed after that by the humongously epic <laughs> Daleks Master Plan. So, of course, it was quickly overshadowed and quickly forgotten. And, of course, everybody thinks about the Daleks Master Plan when they think of Season 3 of Doctor Who rather than thinking about, you know, poor old Galaxy 4. <laughs> and uh, Galaxy 4, of course, had been written um, with uh, Ian and Barbara in mind for still being there so a lot of the lines were not specifically written for Stephen who was the new companion at the time so he kind of gets lost in the shuffle in this episode but he you know um, Peter Purvis 
does very well with what he's given. He, you know, he makes it work for him overall. And I understand Peter Purvis himself isn't that fond of the story because of the fact that it wasn't really written for him and, you know, it didn't have a lot going on for Stephen. But uh, again, he, he, he really makes it work um, with, with what he's given. He, he really makes it work. As, as far as the animation is concerned for this story, I thought it was pretty good. Um, it's not one of the best ones, um, but it's, it's by no means the worst. Um, I think we easily, <laughs> we have a, a very easy gauge now because um, the absolute worst was the Web of Fear um, and we all know the reasons why, and I, I reviewed that, I think, in the, was it the last? I think it was the last episode of Q-Who. Um, so, um, but certainly recently. Uh, so you can get my thoughts on that story there. Um, I really uh, think this is a decent outing. It's not the best Hartnell outing, because we've got two others to judge it by, which was uh, The Reign of Terror and the Tenth Planet. Now, a lot of people are always down on the Reign of Terror because there were certain limitations in that animation, and certain people didn't like the way that they did that. But I thought the animation itself for Reign of Terror was fantastic. Um, you know, there there are... You know, no animation is perfect. Let's just put it that way. There's, none of the animations are 100% perfect, and, and they're, they're probably never going to be. But uh, we just have to deal with that. Um, that's just, you know, par for the course. The BBC is not Disney or Pixar. They don't have millions of dollars to throw at it. So, you know, they have a very small budget for these animators. And the animators you know, with all their talent, can only do so much when you've got time constraints and you're not, you know, you, you don't have the budget. So I think we have to kind of forgive some of the failings of some of these animations. Um, I, I think some people have been overcritical of certain ones, um, like Fury from the Deep. I For some, you know, I was very surprised to hear some reviewers were really tough on that story, and I thought the animation was beautiful. It was one that I thought was one of the better ones, but uh, there you go. You know, uh, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. So I thought they did a wonderful job with Fury from the Deep, and it's the same um, production company, which is Big Finish um, Creative, I think is what it's called, who did Fury from the Deep and Galaxy 4, I think they did a rather nice job on both, and I, but I think Fury from the Deep was a little bit better. Um, I, I, I think Galaxy 4 is, is good, and I, I think, um, you know, yeah, it, it, it could be better, but um, overall it's, it's quite good. For, for a story that's somewhat rudimentary and straightforward and not a lot going on, um, it didn't need to be a lavish production. It really didn't. Um, you could tell the production team, the animation team that worked on Evil of the Daleks, for instance, really worked hard to make it pretty lavish and to make it um, beautiful. Um, but uh, Galaxy 4 is beautiful for different reasons. It's, uh, as, as one reviewer would call it, a more cartoony sort of style, but I think it suits this story fairly well. Um, would I prefer an animation style more like Tenth Planet or Moonbase or The Invasion? Sure. Um, but we're not going to get that. You know, th those are different production companies with their own style, and they're not even working on animations anymore. Um, I think one or two of those companies don't even exist anymore. So, um, yeah, we're not. We're not. We're probably not going to get any more animations that look quite like that. Um, but a lot of money was put into those. Uh, more money than the BBC are probably willing to do these days, um, or or even able to do these days. So, um, yeah, I don't think we're going to see the like of those again. But look at Evil of the Daleks, and you can see what they're capable of. What we, what can be achieved. That was wonderful from start to finish. Um, 
but I think Galaxy 4 is wonderful on its own level. It may not be A+, plus, but it's a very strong B. I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the color version. The colors are beautiful in this, and that kind of makes it um, watchable. Um, the black and white version, I did watch part one, um, and it's adequate. But again, as I said in, in, a, in another episode of Q Who, I don't understand why you do black and white versions of these animations and then cut off the sides. Um, I, I don't understand doing the black and white versions at all. Um, there's no reason why they shouldn't be color for animation unless you're going to do like Web of Fear where they only animated that missing episode. I can kind of see it if they had just done that in black and white, like they did with the 10th planet, Reign of Terror, the Invasion, uh, the Moon Base, etc. Um, I can understand those. They weren't designed to be color. They're, they're perfectly fine in black and white. Um, for some fans, apparently it's jarring to go from color to black and white when you're watching the live action and then go to the animation. That's not that way for me. Um, but, um, I, for these complete stories that are more or less completely lost or completely animated, at least, I don't understand doing a black and white version. Um, I, it just, it's a waste. It's a, it's a, it's a complete waste of budget. It's a complete waste of time. And those fans that bellyache about it, eh, they'll get over themselves. Um, and they should. <laughs> There's no, there's absolutely no earthly reason why there should be a black and white version or why you should even care about watching it in that form. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be up for colorizing the black and white existing episodes, mind you. Nothing like that. But I, I just don't see why they can't take a little license with the animations. And I can't see why they don't just do color versions 16.9, release it that way. Don't even bother with the black and white and waste your time. You can always turn the color off on your television if you're desperate to see them in black and white. So there's absolutely no earthly reason for that. So that's one of my big pet peeves on these animations um, in the modern animation era is why are they doing black and white versions? It makes no sense whatsoever. Um, I, I apologize to those who like that. But again, you can turn the collar off of on your TV. You don't have to watch them in black and white. We're getting an old black and white TV. I have one sitting around here somewhere, and you can easily <laughs> watch it on an old black and white TV if need be. I'm sure you can find one in a garage sale somewhere cheap. So hook up your DVD player to that. <laughs> But there's absolutely no reason for the extra expense and time to create a black and white version in standard dimensions when they cut off the sides and all that stuff. It just makes no sense. It just makes no sense at all. And the color for Galaxy 4 is so brilliant. It's so beautiful to go and watch that black and white version. I feel like I'm being cheated when I watch that black and white version because I'm not seeing everything. They did take a lot of creative license with this animation. And uh, I listened to the commentary with Gary Russell on episode one, and I completely agree with his reasons. And I don't see why they can't take a few visual creative licenses on these animations. It just makes sense in some cases. And, and in some cases, they don't have much choice because, again... The budget, the time, they, they, they don't have time to recreate, you know, complete episodes frame by frame, which they couldn't do anyway unless it's one that exists. So what's the point? Um, so I think it's okay. It's okay. Um, Galaxy 4, again, I would give it a B as far as the animation is concerned. I, I think uh, it's it's wonderful. It's fun. William Hartnell is my doctor. I love Hartnell. I'm so happy to get a Hartnell. The likenesses are pretty good with the animation. I think he looks like Hartnell. I, I heard one reviewer say he looked more like Richard Herndl. I can kind of see 
sort of sparks of that in there, but overall he looks like Hartnell to me. Um, so I, th I think it was fine. They did a fine job. I thought Vicky was the best one. She really looked good. She looked like Vicky. And, uh, yeah, I, I think they did a wonderful job with her. Steven pretty much looked like Steven. Um, there's something with the noses on those two characters, Steven and the Doctor, that are not quite right, but you can forgive it. I mean, it's animation. You can forgive it. You, you, you suspend a certain disbelief watching the animations to begin with, to me. So a little bit of license, a um, little bit of variation, it, it doesn't matter. So overall, I have to say, this is a win. This is, this is really good. A B, a good strong B for this story. Um, I would have given Evil of the Daleks an A. I would have given Web of Fear an F. <laughs> so you can, you, you can see a B is really good. A B is really good. Free from the deep, I would have given an A minus. So yeah, there you go. Um, but uh, Galaxy Four is a lot of fun. Um, I've always been rather fond of the story, as I said. And with that material that we had about six minutes from Episode One and Episode Three being found a decade ago, um, I I really enjoyed watching that material over the years and uh, enjoyed the reconstructions, but I'm not as into the reconstructions as I am the animations, so it's much easier to get the feel of the story in animation than it is on those telesnap reconstructions. So I, my default's always going to be the animations. And uh, this is a good one. This is a good one. And I'm so happy to have a Hartnell animated again. And we've got three Hartnell animated stories. Yay. All right. So, and I get the impression that that's probably what's going to happen. We're going to start seeing a better balance. I think they're going to do more heart nails. I kind of, if I'm predicting, I think the next heart now may well be Mission to the Un Unknown slash The Myth Makers. With, with the, the reason why I say this, and a lot of people have said, oh, they're not going to do that. Why wouldn't they do that? They don't, they have proven that they don't, the BBC, they don't really have a lot of faith in the historical stories. So they're going to want something that's more of a bang for your buck to get you to buy the Myth Makers Blu-ray or DVD. So I think they're going to put Mission to the Unknown with it. And I think it makes perfect sense. Plus, a lot of people say, well, we can throw it on the Daleks Master Plan release whenever they finally get to animating that one. Not necessarily. I mean, it would be out of order, for starters. It comes between Galaxy 4 and the Myth Makers. So it would make perfect sense in chronology for it to be on the Myth Makers disc. It, it should be on that release. And I think they'll do that because you'll have a one-off Dalek story along with the Myth Makers, and that will make you want to buy that release more than if it was just the Myth Makers. So I think that's what they're going to do. I really do. And I applaud it. I, I'm all for it if that's the plan. And I suspect that will be the next Hartnell that we get maybe late next year, hopefully. Fingers crossed, maybe about this time next year we'll be getting that one, and I could certainly live with it. I've heard some rumors and so forth through the grapevine, which you of course take with <laughs> grains of salt, that there's a possibility that e we'll either get Marco Polo or Donick's Master Plan for the 60th anniversary year. That would be amazing. I don't know if that's going to happen, but uh, it is an interesting thought. What if we did get one of those stories, or both, for the 60th anniversary as our animations? I could certainly live with that. So uh, we'll see, though. We'll see. Um, I think some likely stories for Hartnell to be um, animated next would be something like The Savages would be a good one. Sort of like uh, with Galaxy 4, there's not tons of characters and not in tons of locations. It would be a fairly easy one uh, in comparison to do when you think about it compared to some of the others. Um, I know the Celestial Toymaker has been mentioned by a lot of fans for being one that they think might be one of the next Hartnells. But that one I, I think would be a lot more complex because there's, especially for the color version, there's a lot of colors. There's a lot of background characters and so forth um, 
there would be a lot involved in creating the Celestial Toymaker. So I really don't think we're going to get that one next. And the Celestial Toymaker's costume if, probably wouldn't be correct because they don't like to do that those elaborate color schemes on costumes. So it would be kind of tough to do him. So I don't think that's a likely candidate for one of the next ones. I really don't. So I think they would more likely go back and do something like the Crusade before they would do um, the Celestial Toymaker. But that's just my own personal feelings. If they were going to do another historical besides the Myth Makers, I think it's likely that they would do either the Massacre or the Smugglers, which I think the Smugglers, the smugglers would probably be the more likely choice. But uh, I really think next up would probably be Missions of the Unknown, Myth Makers, and then if they don't do Marco Polo for the 60th anniversary or the Daleks Master Plan, then um, they'll probably do the Savages, and they may do the Crusade. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that's the, the, the stories they end up doing next. So we'll see. It's interesting to sort of um, <laughs> look ahead and, and guess, you know, and, and predict. But, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how all that comes out. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, my review of Galaxy 4. Um, I will come back soon and do another Q Who, perhaps when we get the uh, Season 17 release, which is coming up on Blu-ray. And I'm not sure if I'm going to get the UK version, the big box, or just wait until the, uh, the, the American version comes out a few months later. It just it really depends on my budget, for starters. But uh, as soon as I get it, I'll do another Q-Who and review that. And if I have anything else to talk about in the worlds of classic Doctor Who, I will do another Q-Who. But in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope you go out and buy Galaxy 4 and support the range. I think it's a good release. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, uh, the Evil of the Ox has just come out over here in America, so go out and grab that one. It's wonderful. You really love that. And then uh, Galaxy Force coming out soon. And on February 1st, The Web of Fear will finally be released in, in the U.S. It's the worst animation, I can tell you that. But it's at least it's just one episode. It's a special edition release of The Web of Fear, so you'll get the other episodes remastered and with commentary tracks on all of them. And a, a bunch of extra features, which are cool. So it's worth the money. Go out and grab it. It's about 20 bucks, I think, on Amazon. So so go ahead and pre-order that and grab that one on February 1st. Uh, you'll enjoy the story, even if you don't enjoy the uh, Web of Fear Part 3 animation. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's coming out, and uh, some good things are happening. So we are lucky as fans. But uh, please do support the animations and go out and purchase them. And uh, don't belly ache. Um, just because they're not perfect, they're, they're never going to be. The BBC is not Disney, so let's keep that in mind. Um, it's wonderful that we're getting these. It's really wonderful that we're getting them. All right, guys, thanks so much. You know the drill. I will talk to you guys real soon. I love you to death. Stay tuned. You have been listening to a fan production for Dream Realm Enterprises. This is a not-for-profit program.